Hi, everyone. My name is Soji Kashiwagi, and I'm the executive director and playwright of the Grateful Crane Ensemble, a nonprofit theater group based in Los Angeles, California. And on behalf of all of us in Grateful Crane and our friends from Hawaii, welcome to the virtual premiere reading of my play, The Grapevine. Before we get started, a little background about the play. Back in 1992, I wrote my first play called The Grapevine, a farcical comedy about Japanese American community gossip and how it almost ruins a young man's life. In 1993, it premiered at the Los Angeles Theater Center where it played before sold out houses for four weeks. Fast forward 28 years and we're bringing the play back to life in today's virtual reading with a Hawaii twist. This time it's called The Grapevine and thanks to a pigeon translation and local flavor by Hawaii artist, theater artist, Stu Hirayama, the play now takes place on Oahu instead of LA and features a cast of all Hawaii-based actors. And thanks to a grant from the JA Community Foundation, we're presenting the play to you now. With all that's been happening over the past year and a half, we hope the play brings you some joy and laughter and some much need time to get away from it all. So let us take you now to Hawaii, 1993, as we present the virtual premiere of The Grapevine, directed by Stu Hirayama and written by yours truly. Hi, I'm Eddie Goodoy. I'll be playing Dan. How's it? My name is Daryl Bonilla, and I'll be reading the role of Wayne. What's up? I'm Kat Nakano, reading the part of Tracy. Aloha, my name is Janet Morimoto, and I'll be reading the part of Emiko. Hello, I'm Denise Aiko Chinen. I'll be reading for Setsuko. Hi, my name is Samantha Fukushima, and I'll be reading the part of Aya and Kibi. Aloha, I'm Charles Tim Tim, and I'll be reading the part of Tak. I'm Sean. I'm reading Sage Directions. Act one. Scene one, lights fade to black and coconut wireless by the Ray Charles Singers is heard as we see Emiko Nato, 67, peering through her kitchen window with a pair of high powered binoculars. She looks through the binoculars, looks out the window, squints and then looks through the binoculars again. Her husband, Tak Nato, 69, sits at the kitchen table reading a copy of the Hawaii Hochi newspaper. Emiko looks out again and speaks. Oh. Look like get one new boy moving in across the street. Huh? Gone fun in ma. Put away those stupid binoculars. Ah, I gotta call Sechan. Not Sechan. Again. Uh, all the time. Gossip, gossip, gossip. Rusai. That's all you two do. All day, all night. Yak, 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 yak. You so nearly. Lights fade on Emiko and Tak and come up on Wayne Kamaboko. 28-year-old bachelor and his best friend, Dan Adobo, also 28, who enter carrying boxes of stuff, moving back and forth from a pickup truck to an apartment. They are moving Wayne into his bachelor pad. It's Dan the man, the Danimo, my best bud in the whole world, helping me move into my swinging bachelor pad in the heart of Kaliki. This is getting to be a bad habit, Wayne. Here we are in 1993. And you've already moved three times in the last year and a half. Shit. This same shit load of shitty shit shit. Hey, chill, dude. What's up with you anyway? Hey, you want to know what's up? My damn pickup truck. That's what's up. It's not you, Hall. It's Dan Hall. Dan Hall's wing shit. Dan Hall's anti shit. Dan Hall's shit of people I don't even know. Shit. Get a grip, Danimo. If you were to ever leave home, which looks like never, I'd be the first in line to help you out. Why you didn't move out in the first place? You had so good at home. Mom's home cooking, she did your laundry, washed the dishes. Yeah, it was good and you know I love my mom, but it was just too much. What you mean? I had too much, you know, Wayne do this, Wayne do that. Wayne, why you not find one nice Japanese girls and settle down? Wayne, when you gonna get one real job? Wayne, 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 every day, nonstop, but just too much. You know what I mean? I hear you. You needed your space. 
you need to do break free and be free. A bra, three moves in less than two years. It must have remind you of the apartments from hell. Apartment number one, Eva Beach. Cockroaches everywhere in the kitchen, crawling up from the toilet when you like take a dump. What's wrong with that? Apartment number two, Kaimuki. Screaming babies, young kids blasting their music into the night. And no forget the psycho dramas upstairs. Pounding headaches, rattled nerves, cracks in my ceiling. I love the taiko. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Wayne. Chill. Chill. Nice looking boy, man. Uh, what is he? Japanese? Korean? Horagi? Ah, chotto, chotto. Doesn't he look like, oh, what is their name? He owns the Kamaboko Fish Market on Kaheka Street. We're next to Dai A. Not the uh, Shig Kamaboko. Kamaboko, yes, yes, Kamaboko, that's him. He always give me extra sashimi without charging me because I'm a regular customer. I'm calling Sekchan right now. Mata! Danamo, I know moving me around town has been a major pain in the ass. So this time, I've decided to make it up to you. Oh. Hello? Hello? Setchan. Set Enter Setsuko Maguro, 67, aka Setchan. She's working out with a light hand weight and is dressed in a sweatsuit. She is into fitness. Emi chan, Emi chan, what now? I'm right in the middle of Oshin. Let me call you back. Oshin, again, how many times have you watched it? 12 or something? Besides, this is better than Oshin. What? What? You'll never guess who just moved in. Who? Who? No, no, you just go ahead and watch Oshin. Oh, tell me, Emi-chan, don't do this to me. Tell me. No, no, that's okay. I just called to. Emi-chan? I've invited Tracy over to help me interior decorate the new pad. She'll be here in about 10 minutes. Tracy Furukake. Boy-san Kamaboko from Kamaboko Fish Market. Tracy Furukake. <laughs> Boy-san Kamaboko? Tracy Furukake. No shit. Boy-san Kamaboko, honto? Honto? No shit. Jeez. I never seen, I never even see her since our days at Mwanalua. I heard she went mainland. To the Columbia School of Journalism, but now she's back. I remember you had it bad for her. I can describe that girl in three words. Fab, you, less. She was Cherry Blossom Queen. And miscongeniality. <laughs> they high five. Tech gives Emiko a dirty look. Ocha! Ocha! Oh, oh, I have to go, said John. Pack wants his tea. I'll call you later, Nese chan. I'll be waiting. She was the girl of your dreams. The girl. Who was always more interested in you than me. No way. Hey, to this day, I can never figure out why you two never get together. I've known Tracy since kindergarten. We're friends. Just friends. Uh huh. What? Sure, you're just friends. Like me and you. We're just friends, but I know you and you wanted more than just friends. Back in high school, everybody thought you guys was going with each other. I'm telling you, we were just friends. Hey, get real, Wayne. You guys even had your own song. Always and forever, each moment with you. It's just like a dream to me that somehow came true. No, 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 no. It was a dream to me, but it didn't come true. Why not? Yes, she was the girl of my dreams, but she didn't even know I existed. I'd say hi to her in the hall, and she'd look at me and say, Hi, Stan. But with you, I don't think I'd never see you doodling sweet nothings on each other's peaches in sixth grade math class. One Tracy doodling, 
That's all I needed. But no, it was always Wayne plus Tracy minus Dan equals left out again. To this day, I hate math. Just drop it already, all right? Oh, touchy, touchy. Rainbow, the Wayne Nester, Wayne Orama. Hey, what's up with you, huh? Uh, nothing, it's nothing. It's just right there, waiting for you. You don't know the whole story, Dan. What's so obvious what was going on? Look, I'm telling you, nothing happened between us. Then what did happen? Nothing. We know. We know. Oh, no, 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 no. Not the singing again. That I'm anything but the singing. Daylight comes and I want to go home. We know. We know. Uh, all right, all right. I'll tell you. Just don't sing anymore, okay? So what's up, bro? Okay, it's true. I want it for me more than just friends. Who would it? Things, to be, uh, things seem to be going real good between us. And when Tracy would agree to go see your prom with me, I thought we could step up to another level, you know? From childhood pals, to dinner, dancing and romancing, holding hands and kissing goodnight. But the day before prom, she wouldn't call me and went back out when she got a better offer from Brad, Brad Beef Teriyaki. Big man on campus. I was left there all by myself with a wilted corsage, a dorky light blue tuxedo with tacky fluffy shirt and one squeaky clean family station wagon that I would spend the entire day washing and waxing. Wax on? Wax off? Wax on? Oh, uh, sorry, wait. She called me exactly at 3.07 p.m. a day before prom and left me there. Talks, the wheels, a new do and no place to go. We've been just friends ever since. Wow, man. I never know. You told me you got sick. Sick of being just friends. Sick of being just like a brother. You know, my, you know how many sisters I have? Yo, wait. Bud, step out of it. That prom was 11 years ago. Tracy and Brad broke up. You have a new girlfriend? Life goes on. I bet you Tracy doesn't even remember what she did to me. But it's one night I never gonna forget. My mom felt so sorry for me that she forced me to put on the tux and took pictures of me by myself in the tux, <clears throat> smiling and holding the corsage by myself. I still have those pictures. When I'm really depressed, I look at them. And all of a sudden, life isn't so bad. Catch up. Wait on and good looking. Good-looking friends are still outside talking to each other. What good-looking friend? You didn't say anything about a good-looking friend. You know what, Dan? This time, I think I found it, man. Right here in Kalihi. No cockroaches, no taiko headaches, and it's posted up to my folks so I can go home, do my laundry, and grab a free meal. I get peace. I get quiet. Yes, sir, Danimo. No get any better than this. The two go into an elaborate high-five routine. Oh, those poor boys. They've been moving all afternoon. They must be hungry, ne, Pechan? Oh, yes, yes. Emi-chan, those big boxes moving back and forth in the hot sun. Oh, they must be starving. <laughs> I'll call you later, Sechan. I'll be waiting, Emi-chan. Scene two. That same evening, Emiko is still watching with her binoculars. At Wayne's apartment, Wayne picks up his Nerf ball and the two start into what has become their tradition, a game of one-on-one -on -one with a Nerf hoop. There's some takeout local moco on the table. Yo, and the man, what time is it? It's showtime at the Kamabokos. For some good old-fashioned one-on-one. -on -one. High five. The two immediately fall into basketball positions. Wayne has the ball. Dan is guarding him. They move like dancers, like they're doing the cha-cha. Ladies and gentlemen, it has come down to this. Five seconds for the championship of the world. Kamaboko face left. He dribbles right. Five, four, three, two. Kamaboko shoots. <laughs> yes, yes. Wayne Kamaboko is the champion of the Sechan, Sechan, Emi-chan, Emi-chan. I don't believe it. 
I think a Kamapoko boy and his friend are doing the cha cha right in the middle of his apartment. Ara, cha cha? Ocha! Ocha! Cha cha cha! Ocha! Ocha! Cha cha cha! Ara, call you later, said cha. Ocha! I'm calling Aya chan right away! Ota! Ota! Okay, okay! Urusai! Ah, Wayne, Wayne, dude, how come you always end up world champion, huh? How come I'm never world champion, huh? I wanna be world champion. It's a simple mathematical formula, Danimo. Oh, no, not math again. Wayne, plus ball equals two. Two equals swish, swish, minus that equals in your face. Disgrace, Grandma. <laughs> Aya-chan! Aya-chan! This is not Aya! This is Chibi! Chibi-chan, this is Set-chan. Let me talk to Aya-chan right now. Tutomate! Aya-chan, <laughs> Who is it? It's Set-chan, and she sounds mad! Haro. It's about time, Aya-chan. Urusayo. Now, I forget why I called. Oh, 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 I remember. What? What? Tell me, Set-chan. Tell me. Emi-chan just told me the Kamaboko fish boy and his friend are doing the lambada together in his apartment. Naked. Ara! Lambada. Naked. Honto. Mm -hmm. Tracy Furikake, 28, enters and knocks on Wayne's door. Wayne freezes a moment. Then he opens the door. Christy, good to see you again. Hey, Wayne. So, where's this girlfriend I've heard so much about, huh, Wayne? I want to meet her. What? No. How you doing, Wayne? Long time no see, you, Wayne. Chase, okay, Wayne Bo. In all those years I was back, East, have you ever written to me? Have you ever returned any of my phone calls? I mean, I had to hear it to the grapevine that you had a girlfriend and then I hear you guys have been going out for almost a year. Thanks for telling me, Wayne. I'm only like one of your best friends, but it's okay, Wayne, really. I understand. Only reason I'm here is because Wayne needed my truck. You remember. Stan! Oh my God, how long has it been? Uh, Trace. Oh, uh, Trace, his name is uh, Dan. Excuse me, Wayne. His name is Stan. Right, Stan? Ah, uh, well... Uh, uh, excuse me, Trace. His name is Dan. It's Stan. Tell him Stan. Ah, uh, Tracy, my name is really Dan, but, but you can call me Stan. I don't mind, really. Stan the man. Stanorama. Stanley Steamer the carpet cleaner. Hey, shut up, Wayne. Wayne and Stan. Sorry, Wayne and Dan in the cafeteria every day without fail. I can see both of you now in your disco shirts, fake gold chains, and angel flight super tight polyester disco pants. <laughs> Call a fashion patrol and shoot those two immediately. Chase, you remember the first time I tried talking to you? When was this? In the hallway in front of your locker. I walked by and sort of stood there. Where that was you. <laughs> I mean, here, here I was talking to Chasey Furukake, every guy's dream. My heart was pumping, my hands were sweating, and before you could turn around to see who I was, I was gone. Just another face in a hallway of faces. What is it? I know a bad brat or B.O. I wear clean clothes. It's oh, it's your look, Trace. I mean, if I didn't know you since kindergarten, I wouldn't talk to you either. It was like, I don't can talk to her, just one look. And it was, uh, 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 uh. and then it was like, she must have a boyfriend. She must have five boyfriends, all bigger and better than me. She won't talk to me. She'll laugh in my face. <laughs> I have no chance. I'm so low, low. If any one of you took the time to talk to me, I mean, really sit down and talk to me, you would have found out that I was not the baboos a lot of people in that school made me out to be. 
just because I look a certain way, people think they're not going to talk to me, get to know me. All I really needed was for somebody to come up and say hello. Hello. <laughs> what? <laughs> see, you see, bro, I told you. Hello, hello. Hey, shut up, Wayne. I'm just kidding. Get over it. <laughs> hey, so Trace, what's up with you? I hear you're going to be our next Action News TV reporter. I may just be a TV news intern, but look for me soon. <clears throat> Breaking news from downtown Honolulu. This is Tracy Furikake of KITV Channel 4, field reporter, weekend anchor, weekday anchor, and my ultimate goal to be the next Amy Tomembang. Oh, uh, next Tracy. Meet men who love women, who love women, who love men. Okay? For real. <laughs> uh oh. Gotta go, Aya Chan. I have another call, okay? Bye. Hello? Hey, Chan. Forget what I said earlier about the two boys doing the cha cha together. Get one young lady has just entered the scene, and Boy San and his friend are both flirting shamelessly with her. What is she? Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese. Flirting? Who is she? Oh, this is getting good, Emmy Chan. What else is happening? No, she looks familiar, Chechan. I know, I know. It's the Furikake girl. You know, the cherry blossom queen a few years ago. You know what I heard, Chechan? The only reason she won was because her rich father paid off the judges. Eee! And I heard she's not so smart, you know. How you say? Baboos. <laughs> so, ne, Emi chan. Furikake. Oh, I know Fred Furikake. Uh, he's part of that Okinawan Furikake family. Okinawan? Hey, chan, that says the Furikake girl comes from an Okinawan family. But, uh, that means the Kamapoko fish boy is seeing one Okinawan girl. Ah! The Kamaboko boy and one Okinawan girl, it can't be Emmy chan I don't believe it. I don't believe. Don't worry, Set-chan. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. How are you going to do that? Oh, I can't tell you right now, Set-chan. Choto. Daddy, I'll have your tea ready in one second. Gotta go, Set-chan. Keep me posted, Emmy chan Sorry, I got. Ah, we'll do, Set Chan. I'll call you tomorrow, okay? Okay. 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 Bye, Set Chan. I'll call you tomorrow, okay? Okay. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. They hang up finally. Why don't you just say <clears throat> goodbye and hang up the phone? Urusai! Set Chan appears again on the phone with Aya Chan. Aya Chan, Aya Chan. Not only is the Kamaboko boy doing a sexy naked dance with his friends, he's also seeing a Korean girl on the side. Ara, a Korean girl? Emiko and Tak appear in front of Wayne's place. Taku, Hayaku, Daddy. No all day. Why you gotta be so nearly with every neighbor on the block? Monku, monku, monku. It's the neighborly thing to do, Daddy. Careful with the port tofu. He rings the doorbell. Wayne answers. Hi. You're the Kama Boko boy, right? Remember me? You cut my fish at your fish market all the time. Oh, uh, yeah. Hi, Mrs. Nato. Well, wouldn't you know it? We're neighbors. I live right across the street. Oh, this is my husband, Pat Nato. Oh. <gasps> Pack, this is, uh, what did you say your first name was? Wayne. I call him Boy Son. Oh, I'm sorry, Boy Son. Did we interrupt something? I just thought I'd bring you a plate of my leftover pork tofu. It's not really very good, but I figure a handsome young man like you can use some home cooked meal. Oh, looks like you're already eating. She walks past Wayne and enters the apartment. No, no, please, uh, come on in. You have to excuse the place. Uh. Hello, I'm Emiko Nato. I live across the street. This is my husband, Pat. 
Hi, I'm Tracy. Nice to meet you. My name's Dan. Oh, what you said your last name was? Adobo. Adobo. You're not related to Hiroshi Adobo. So now Wakayama Ken, are you? Hiroshi? Uh, did you say he was your father? Sure, I know your father from way back. <laughs> we used to go baseball together before a war. <laughs> uh, you must be thinking of somebody else, uh, Mr. Nato. I'm not Japanese. Do I look Japanese? Sure, you Japanese. You're an adobo, son of Hiroshi and Sadako adobo. <laughs> Grandson of Fukumatsu and Kofusa adobo from the Wakayama Ken. <laughs> um, I'm Dan Adobo from Honolulu Ken. Uh, you are Japanese. Nihonjin, I'll prove it to you. <laughs> what was your mother's maiden name? Lomi Lomi. <laughs> Shizu Romi Romi, huh? daughter of Kinosuke Romi Romi, who was our first cousin to Hiromi Romi Romi of the Romi Romi clan from Hiroshima Ken. <laughs> Shizu Romi Romi, my mom, my mom is not. Sure. <laughs> I know your mom, your dad, your aunties, your uncles, your grandma, your grandparents, and your second and third cousins on both sides. <laughs> what a small world. <laughs> Excuse me. Are you listening? I said I'm not Japanese. Oh, oh, oh Dan, I'm all chill. Lighten up, Wayne. But am I Filipino or Filipino? Native Hawaiian or Kanaka? Chinese or Pake? Just who am I? Huh? I'm all mixed up. Hiroshi Adobo. I haven't seen him in 35, uh, 40 years. Uh, what a small world. How the heck is he? Lolo. You are Japanese. Be proud. <laughs> Damn. Hi. Yeah. Hey, this is a nice place you have here, boy son. Lots of rules. And these blinds. Where'd you get them? Kmart. DC pennies. Not the best quality, but they'll do just fine. Help me wing with this new place. What nice friends you have, ne, boy son. Must be so nice to have such a supportive girlfriend, ne, boy son. Wayne and Tricia are just friends, Mrs. Nato. Pack helps himself to some loco moco. Eh, uh, no, this loco moco. <laughs> yeah, I've known Trace since kindergarten. Childhood sweetheart, how romantic. No, Mrs. Nato, Wayne and I are just friends. Yeah, they're just friends. My real girlfriend, Annie, is out of town for a couple weeks on vacation. Annie? What's Annie's last name? Yakisoba. Yakisoba? Not George Yakisoba, a brother of Nobi Yakisoba, who owns the Yakisoba noodle shop on Kapilani Boulevard. <laughs> you don't have to explain, boy son. I understand. I understand perfectly. Be sure to make a cute couple, ne, daddy? Huh? Never mind. Oh, this must be the bedroom. Uh, please, Mrs. Nato, it's such a mess. One bedroom. How cozy. Oh, it's 7.30 already. Uh, come, Ma. It's time for us to go. <laughs> and a double bed. I guess a big boy like you needs a big bed. Ne, boy, son. He walks over Hold looking at Tracy. Tracy. Oh, sorry. Hold on to this one, Tracy. Ma! Let's go already. Uh, thanks for coming, Mrs. Nato, Mr. Nato. Uh, thanks again for the pop tofu. I'll be seeing you again, boy son, real soon. Wayne sees the couple to the door. Emiko and Tak are now walking back to their house. This thing wheel of fortune. You sign, eh? The only reason you watch that stupid show is because of Vanna White. Speaking of Vanna White, you know what I heard, Daddy? They're fake. <laughs> so. After seeing the couple out, Wayne turns to Dan and Tracy. Who were they? The neighbors from hell. That's who. Nah. I see Mrs. Nato down at the fish market all the time. She's a little hyper, but harmless. And hey, maybe she'll bring me leftover dinner all the time. What a deal, huh? Lights fade on Wayne. Emiko is on the phone, looking out with her binoculars. Emi-chan, Emi-chan, Emi-chan. Are you sitting down? 
the Kamaboko boy is not only seeing the Okinawan girl, he has another girlfriend on the side. Who knows how many girlfriends he has? Two, three, maybe ten? Who knows? Handsome boy like that? He, he may have a harem. Like Will Chamberlain. All the young ladies after him. Aya-chan, this is bigger than we could have ever imagined. I'm calling Aya-chan right now. Okay. 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 I'm calling Aya-chan right now, okay? Okay. 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 Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Urasai! Scene three. That same evening, Wayne, Dan, and Tracy remain at Wayne's. Meanwhile, Sechan and Aya-chan are on the phone. Aya-chan! Aya-chan! What, Sechan? Tell me, Sechan! Emi-chan was just over at the Kamaboko boys' place, and she said he had a whole harem of women over there. You mean like Wilt Chamberlain? Exactly! And I think she said some of them looked awfully young. 16, 15, some even 12. Ah, I have to tell Mickey Chan right away. Wayne picks up a Nerf ball. And how about some more one on one? Excellent. Let's do it, man. But this time, I'm world champion, man. Wait a sec. Are you guys regressing or what? Regressing? Jeez, Tracy. You take one psychology class, and all of a sudden, I just find it kind of funny that two 28-year-old guys would still be playing with their Nerf ball. That's all. What's wrong with Nerf ball? Yeah. You guys act like kids. Do not. Okay, fine. Have it your way. Yes. <laughs> and Wayne, high five. Okay, my ball. Out of bounds. Uh, no, it's my ball. They freeze for a moment. Then they decide to John Ken Pone for it. John can ho, I can show. Ichi ichi to, big boto. Wayne gets scissors, Dan get paper. Wayne wins. <laughs> the ball, my friend, is mine, Lola head. Eho, <laughs> bakatare. You know why you act like this, don't you? Lighten up, Trace. We're just two guys having fun, that's all. Yeah, it's Trace. Me and Wayne. We need this time to unwind, to cut loose, to party on. Dan and Wayne, high five. It's your mother's. Hey, no. Don't be talking about my mother. Yeah. You never had to grow up because a good old mom always took care of everything. The cooking, the cleaning, the laundry, all that real world stuff. You never have to deal with it. I mean, Wayne, I hear your mom still cooks up five meals for you every week. Talk it's about five. oil. It's not five. It's four. She puts them in cool whip containers and says, Wayne Chan, don't forget to freeze them. I've labeled everything. Terry chicken on Monday, spaghetti on Tuesday. When are you going to grow up, Wayne? I don't want to grow, wanna grow up. up. I'm a I'm Toys R Us kid. kid. There's, There's a lot, lot, so lots, lots of basketball that we can, that play, we can with. play with. I give up. <laughs> Emiko appears at Wayne's and knocks. She's with a very reluctant tack. Sumimasen, boy-san. I'm so sorry to barge in on you again, but I forgot to ask. Is Loco Ahi still on special for $19.99 a pound? Yeah, $19.99. Thank you. Thank you, boy-san. I'll be leaving now, but don't you worry. I'll be back. She closes the door and her and Tack head back home. I can't believe it, Daddy. He lied to me. And they're still fucking and partying. I'm surprised they're not doing the cha-cha-cha like they were earlier. Crazy dances. Well, parties. Uh, in our day, we didn't have time for such foolishness. We worked. That's what we did. And when it was time for play, we worked some more. You see the calluses on these hands? These are working man's hands. Good, honest, working man's hands. Young people today, they soft. They don't know nothing about work. Wayne, Dan, and Tracy resume eating their pizza dinner. All right. Okay. You guys want a beer? 
say, Wayne, don't you just get a little tired of pepperoni and mushroom pizza? Actually, Wayne here makes a killer spam burger. I mean, it's even better than Zippy's Terry B sandwich. Tell her, Wayne. Take a regular sized can of spam. Take out the gooey meat and mash it in your hand. Then you form it into a couple of patties. Add some shoyu, a raw egg, fry it up, and stick it between two pieces of love's bread with mayo oozing off the sides. <laughs> Normally, I do not like raw eggs and spam. I do not like them then. I am, but Wayne's Killer Spam Burger, it's onolicious. <laughs> Broke them out, bruh. Dan and Wayne go into an elaborate high five, low five routine. Latest news, Sechan. The Kamaboko boy is a liar. I gave him the Emiko Nato Sashimi test and he failed. Loco Ahi Sashimi is not $19.99 a pound, it's $25.99. And it's not even very fresh. Now, why would he be lying to me like that, Sechan? What is he trying to hide from me? Who knows what perverse things go on behind closed doors? He tries to act sweet and innocent, but I can see right through him, Sechan. Pack enters. Oh. Oh. Gotta go, Sechan. Bye. Okay, Emi chan. She hangs up and dials Aya chan. Aya chan. Aya chan. Hello. Oh no. Hello? Is this Ayako Donburi? Hi. Aya-chan, you don't sound so good. Doshita? I was sitting here with Chibi when the mail arrived. The mail? It's June already, and my son in Chicago just now got around to sending me his Christmas card. It's one of those silly family portrait cards. It says, Merry Christmas from Kelly, Christy, and Katsu Donburi. No, dear mom. No, how are you, mom? He didn't even sign it. Ara, Aya-chan. I'm so sorry, ne. And I looked at the picture, and it's not even his family. It's, how you say, generic family. And they're not even Japanese. Ah, oh, Ara, your only child, Aya-chan. He ought to be ashamed. He never writes. He never calls. He never comes home to visit. And now this. All I, had her, all I ever had was Chibi. Oh, Chibi. Hi! Set-chan, next to you and Miki-chan, Chibi is my only friend. My best friend. Oh, Aya-chan. Hontoni. I'm so sorry, kawaii so ne. You know, I've been kind of, oh no, never mind. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, Ro, what's wrong, Sechan? No, no, it's nothing really. I don't want to burden you with my problems, Aya Chan. Burden me, Sechan, burden me. I want to be burdened. It's nothing, really. Forget I even brought it up, Aya Chan. Set John, tell me, I need to know. Chibi needs to know too, right, Chibi? Hi! You see! All right, hi, all right. Aya Chan, I tell you already, okay? Ever since I was little, I've always been the shy girl, the one always in the background in high school. I was named most likely to be a mime and they put one picture of me in the yearbook looking like this. Oh, I was always a follower, never the leader. In every organization I've ever been in, PTA, the church Mormon, I was never the president, always a vice president, the second banana. I don't understand, Setchan. What's wrong with second banana? We had elections in my bowling league last night. Vice president? Corresponding secretary. <laughs> oh no, Chibi Chan, are you laughing? At Set Chan, Dame Dasuyo, bad Chibi, bad Chibi. Oh, 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 oh,
upset, John. I don't know what got into Chibi. Chibi, you apologize right now. <laughs> That's all right, Chibi Chan. <sighs> Aya Chan, deep down in my heart, I know I can be a leader, but no one ever believed in me. No one ever gave me chance. I believe in you, Set Chan. You're always there for me. I don't know what I'd do without you. Thank you. Thank you, Aya Chan. Wait a second. Aya Chan, I know there was a reason I called. Oh, yes. Yes, Setchan. Take me away, please. Tell me all about the Kamaboko boy and the 12-year-old Vietnamese girl. Where have you been, Aya Chan? That's old news. The new news is Kamaboko boy is a pathological liar. Emi Chan just told me all about it. She went over there again, and he completely lied about the price of sashimi. And I hear their sashimi is not even fresh. Hara? Still sashimi. Tell me more, Setchan. I no believe this. I just no can believe. Ayachan, for as long as I've known you, have I ever passed on false information? No. Well then, believe it. <laughs> oh, gotta go, Setchan. Chibi has to go, Shishi. She hangs up and dials her friend Miki chan. Miki chan! Miki chan! Are you sitting down? Oh, let's get back to the subject at hand. Where is she, Wayne? I've heard nothing but good things about her. Are yeah, you holding out on me, Wayne? You didn't tell me Annie was on vacation. So oh, let's just say she and I are taking a little vacation from each other. Oh. oh. And how long is this vacation? A couple weeks. Whose idea was it, Wayne? Hers. Oh. You guys get in another fight, Wayne? And what if we did? Nothing like a two-week vacation to get away from it all, huh, Wayne? Sometimes you just need to take a breather. Yeah, the good old two-week vacation. Yeah. 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 You know what, Wayne? I kind of like this place. It definitely has potential. I think this would be the best place. This could be the best place you've ever had. Lights up on Emiko's. She remains at the window with her binoculars on the phone. Yes, Sumi. Yes, Miki. Yes, Aiko. Yes, Keiko. It's all true. Every word of it. Yes, yes. Keep calling. Keep those calls coming. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Scene four. The next day, Wayne enters his living room looking at a piece of paper. He looks at it again and sighs. He picks up the phone and dials. Hello? Is this Love Songs on Crater 96? Yes, it is. I'm Mandy Lee, and this is Love Songs on Crater 96. And who am I speaking with on this glorious evening? My name is Wayne. I'm from Kalihi. What can we do for you tonight, Wayne from Kalihi? I'm a little down right now, Mandy. Oh, what seems to be the problem? Wayne from Kalihi. Well, uh, after about a year and a half, my girlfriend Annie decided she doesn't want to see me anymore. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, Wayne. I was working at my dad's fish market when she dropped the bomb. She came by the market, Wayne? No, she dumped me by fax. Her note said, two pounds of mahi, one pound onaga. And I'm sorry, Wayne, it just isn't working out between us. And that was it. Dumped by fax. Well, Wayne from Kalihi, I want to thank you oh so very much for sharing that most touching story with us tonight on Love Songs on Crater 96. Is there something special you'd like to play for Annie tonight, Wayne? Um, anything, Mandy. I leave it up to you. We send this one out, especially for Wayne in Kalihi. Wayne hangs up the phone, sits back on the couch and listens. Music is heard and it's Michael Jackson's She's Out of My Life. The first verse is heard. Wayne, realizing what song is playing, covers his ears, rushes over to the radio and switches the station. The next song he hears is Neil Sadaka's Breaking Up is Hard to Do. He switches off the radio and switches on the TV. On the next Oprah, men who love women and the women who dump them by fax. Wayne turns off the TV. 
The doorbell rings. Wayne opens the door to find Emiko with a plate of food. He quickly shuts the door in her face, then opens it, grabs a plate of food, and shuts it again. Wayne is frantically looking around his apartment. Where's my Nerf ball? I need my Nerf ball. It's my only comfort. Wayne goes over to the kitchen sink and finds his ball sopping wet. Ah! He holds up the wet ball and reads from a note from Wayne's mom. Voice over. Wayne Chan, this is mom. I came over while you were at work and did your filthy dishes. This orange <laughs> thing makes a great dishwashing sponge. He squeezes the water out of his Nerf ball and starts crying as he jumps up and down like a little kid. Ah, my Nerf ball, my Nerf ball. The phone rings. Hello? Mom, what did you do to my Nerf ball? What? Calm down, mom. What are you talking about? Mom, will you calm down? Look, I don't can understand anything you... What? Who told you that? Tetchan, Tetchan. Emi-chan, Emi-chan. Are you sitting down? You won't believe what just happened to me. Tell me, Emi-chan, tell me. L listen, mom. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Okay, mom. Mom. <laughs> Okay, listen to me. Number one, I am not getting married. Two, she's not Vietnamese. And three, she is not pregnant with my child. There I was, being a good neighbor, and that I am, standing at the Kamaboko boy's door when he slammed the door in my face. Oh, today, I couldn't believe it. Mom, I don't have wild pajama panty dance parties with scantily clad 10 year old girls. I don't have 15 girlfriends. I don't even have one girlfriend. Annie and, and I broke up today. Yeah, yeah. Mom, don't worry about it. I never knew the Kama Boko boy was so rude. He slammed the door in my face twice, said John. <sighs> but where did you hear all this stuff about me? Oh, hold on, mom. No, go any place, okay, mom? I have another call. Hello? Yo, Wayne. I've been hearing some strange things, man. Oh, not you too. That's right, said John. Starting tomorrow, we boycott Kamaboko Fish Market. No one treats Emiko Nato like that. I'm painting our picket signs right now, Emi-chan. We walk the line tomorrow, said John. Let's practice. Hey, hey, ho, oh, oh, the Kamaboko boy has to go. Hey, 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 ho, oh, oh, the Kamaboko Kama boy, Kama boy has, has to, got to go. go. Mm. Mm. Hold on, Dan. I have another call. Mom, what are you doing calling me again? No, I didn't hang up on you. I put you on hold. Mom, will you just relax? Let me call you back, okay? Okay, I'll call you right back. Hello, Dan. Wait, you didn't tell me about an affair with one Bengalese woman? Animal, it's not true. None of this is true. What the hell is going on here? You telling me crazy stories. My mom is on nuts. What the hell is going on? He slammed the door right in my face, stole my food and slammed the door in my face again. I should call the police on him. I will show him there, Tetchan. On Toyo, Emi-chan. Just do it. Something really weird is going on around here, Dan. Aya-chan! Aya-chan! Hello, Tetchan. Hello, now what's wrong, Aya-chan? Today I attended my husband's one-year memorial service at Humpa Hongwanji. So ne, Aya-chan. You should be very proud. He was a war hero. Yes, yes, he was. No, no, he wasn't. He wasn't. Ara. Chibi. Aya chan, what did Chibi just say? Nothing. Chibi said nothing. Us 
そうよチッピーやかましいあやちゃん How could you? I thought it was killed in Italy, serving, saving 12 buddies by diving on one live grenade. He was famous, Aya chan. No, it was 14 buddies. No, 16. How about zero buddies? Nobody, zero, nada. Aya chan, tell me the truth. All right, all right. I made up the entire story so I wouldn't make a. What? Then how was he killed? He was hit by one vegetable truck in camp! Chibi! <sighs> Araha! You have to promise me you won't tell anyone, okay, Set Chan? Not a word, Aya Chan. Not from me. Oh, oh, oh. I knew there was a reason I called. Most unbelievable news. Amy Chan just told me the Kamaboko fish market is going out of business. And the Kamaboko boy has just been arrested by the police. Hara! Chibi Chan, did you hear that? Hi, what's the me? Set Chan, Chibi Chan can't believe it either. I'm calling Miki Chan right away. Scene five. The next day, we see Emiko, Setchan, and Ayachan perched at Emiko's place, all watching Wayne's place with their binoculars. They're eating orange slices. Tak is sitting with a pair of chopsticks, trying to catch flies in midair. Daddy, what you doing? Shh. No e, Daddy. No use. Why no use one fly swatter like everybody else, for goodness sakes? Emiko turns her attention to Wayne and her friends. Kyoto, Kyoto. Ladies, the Kamaboko boy has been acting very strangely lately. At Wayne's place, Wayne is sitting on the floor with a blanket over his head. Hmm, what is he doing on the floor like that? Aya chan holds Chibi, who now has a muzzle on. Ah, maybe it's some sort of satanic ritual. Ah. Uh, you guys know more nothing better for do. No be so nearly. Nato san, sit down, sit down, join the party. We have front row seats, Nato san. Look at the three of you, spying, chirping away like three old crows. When I was one boy, we never had time for idle gossip. No, sir. We didn't. In fact, we couldn't even talk. That's right. Just shut up and work. Old man used to say, huh? when we did talk, all we talked about was work. That's right. And then he'd cut, off, cut us off and say, shut up and get back to work. Daddy, Daddy, I do believe Wheel of Fortune is on right now. You know how you have you hate to miss the opening theme music. Wheel of Fortune. Oh, oh. Ladies, there's Vanna now. Look at that slinky dress. Ah, uh, all right, all right. I know when I'm not wanted. <laughs> He leaves. Last we heard, the Kamaboko boy was arrested for dating an eight year old Nepalese girl and put in county jail. And Kamaboko san from Kamaboko Fish Market was so ashamed. That after bailing his boy out of jail, he said he was going to sell his store and move out of town. Fonto? Fonto, yo. I don't believe it. How come I never hear that? Where you heard that? Ayako went and talked to Mikiko. Mikiko went and talked to Matsuko. Matsuko went and talked to Hatsuko. Hatsuko went and talked to Keiko. Keiko went and talked to Eiko. Eiko went and talked to Chico. Wait a minute, wait a minute, who's Chico? Oh, oh, he's our new Puerto Rican member. He's such a nice man. Oh. Chico went and talked to Kyoko. Kyoko, Kyoko went and talked to, to Aiko. Aiko, Aiko, Aiko went and talked talk to, to Haruko. Haruko, Haruko went and talked to Yoko. Yoko, hmm? Yoko went and talked to Azuko. Atsuko? Atsuko Kamaboko? 
ったかまぼこボーイズマーガーはいはいそうですよ Straight from the horse's mouth They must be true Lights fade on Emiko Fade up on Dan who is on the phone Ah、uh, Hi JC this is Dan Did you hear about Wayne? You mean you know already? I don't can believe Dan You don't can believe I don't can believe Who told you? Well, I went to talk to my best friend Caroline, who went to talk to her best friend Sheila, who went to talk to her cousin Becky, who went to talk to her mother, who went to talk to a friend, who went to talk to a friend of Wayne's mother. I still don't can believe. In fact, I'm heading over there right now. You want to come? Wait a sec. I didn't know o c h i p o s i get visiting hours. o c h i p o s i What you talking about, Willis? You mean you don't know? I heard Wayne was running a brothel out of his fish refrigerator and he was arrested for grand theft larceny. What? Dramatic music chord is heard. Lights out. Scene six. Emiko, Sechan, and Aya Chan are still perched over at Emiko's. Wayne is still underneath the blanket. Dan enters and bangs on the door. Yo, Wayne, let me in. I know you're in there. Open the door. It's important. I get one local mocha with your name on it. Wayne gets up, takes off the blanket, and answers the door. Dan flies by him and into the apartment. Are you okay, man? Where's the local mocha? Wayne, this is your life we're talking about, man. All you can think about is local mocha. Is it from the local mocha drive in? You know how much I like the local mocha drive in. Hey, snap out of it, Wayne. Bro, it is. Look like we have company. Uh huh. ちょっとちょっと、チビのけんし、チビのけんし。That's okay, チビちゃん。You can look through my binoculars. She positions the binoculars over her stuffed dog's eyes. Aya chan, there's something I need to tell you about チビちゃん。What about チビ What's wrong with my チビ No, no, エミちゃん。Don't do it, エミちゃん。Don't you think it's a little strange to walk around with a soft, dead dog? Emmy chan, just let her be. Aya chan, that's all right. Everything is all right. No shimpai ne? Oh, okay, Sachan, if you say so. There, there, Chibi, everything is all right. She takes off Chibi's muzzle and pets him. There's a knock at the door. It's Tracy. Dan and answers. Wayne, what you doing here? What are you talking about? You mean you're never here? Word on the street is you are arrested for indecent exposure and thrown in O Triple C. What? Tell them the other one, Trace. Rumor also has it that your sashimi went bad because you and your dad are running a brothel out of your fish refrigerator. A what? Wayne, you've been running a brothel. And flashing 12 year old Bhutanese girls. I can't believe you guys actually believe all this stuff. Hey, everybody get on dark side, bro. Yeah. I don't believe this. This isn't about you anymore. It's you, your family, your business, and your reputation. Your scandalous story is going to be on the front page of the Hawaii Herald. And your family is going to be shamed. So, shame, you're gonna have to move out of this country, off this island. To a place where no one k n o w your name or anything about your sordid past. A place like Molokai. Or Lanai. Timbuktu. No. You'll lose your home, your friends. Basketball. Basketball. Oh. oh boy, this is getting good, n e h ladies? Take it easy, Wayne. If you must know the truth, I've been sitting here in this cold apartment trying to figure out why this happened to me and asking myself over and over how could Annie doubt me by facts? That's the only truth in this whole mess. That's the only thing that both you, you don't know. Annie dumped you by facts? In her note, she said we had a communication problem. That I didn't talk to her. She'd ask how I was feeling, and I'd say, fine. Then she'd ask how I was really feeling, and I'd say, fine. 
Then she'd ask, what's wrong? And I say, nothing. I thought I was communicating just fine. I heard you two were talking about getting married. Well, no go starting any rumors. Hey, Wayne. I'm sorry, man. I mean, I never know. Yeah, Wayne. I'm sorry. I was so caught up in those other stories. I mean, no offense, Wayne, but they were a lot juicier than your fact story. It's not a story. Yeah, dude. The one about the brothel in the fish fridge had me going. Wait, excuse me. Is my place being bugged? Is my phone being tapped? How come I feel like people are watching me? Guys, help me. I'm going crazy or what? Dana and Tracy come over and comfort Wayne by putting their arms around him. Take, Take it, it easy, Wayne. Oro. Ara. Yada. Ayachan, call Miki chan immediately. It's an all out orgy. Orgy? How do you spell orgy? Orgy! Orgy! Why? Orgy! Coconut Wireless is heard. End of Act 1. We will now take a 10-minute intermission.
Act two, scene seven. As the instrumental part of Pick a Little, Talk a Little from the Music Man is heard, we see Emiko, Sechan, and Ayachan spotlighted at their respective houses on the phone. To the music, the three women continue their incessant gossiping. Lights fade on the three and come up on Wayne's place. It's two weeks later. Wayne is busy pacing back and forth, trying to figure out the pieces of the gossip puzzle. Dan and Tracy are near a portable slide screen placed in the center of the living room. All I like to know is who did the gossiping, who went benefit from them, and who get the power to cover them up. Kick back, Wayne. Tracy and I only spent the last two weeks trying to figure out this whole thing out. I said, talk to everybody I know, and a lot of people I don't know. This grapevine thing is way bigger than we thought, Wayne. We trace calls throughout the island and beyond. Here, allow us to show you. Hit it, Trace. The lights go down and the original Hawaii Five O theme is heard in the background as the slideshow begins. Okay, it starts here in Kalihi. Dan called me in Mililani. Slides, Dan and Tracy on the phone. Dan heard about you from his friend Bo in Pearl City. A slide of Bo on the phone. Bo heard it from mortician Morty Ahinomoto in New York. Wait Morty a is seen in a suit on phone. Wait, isn't it Ajinomoto? Hi, Jesus, Mort Maria. These Japanese names are driving me crazy. Morty got it from his auntie Harriet in Waipahu. Slide is seen of Harriet in Aloha Tire. Harriet heard from her cousin Jiro in Japan. A slide of Japanese guy on phone. Wayne, your story has gone international. Maybe I should call AT&T and see if I can sign up for frequent caller miles. And from Japan, Jiro heard the news about your scandalous arrest from his sister, a Nisei woman. Slide of a Nisei lady on phone, mouth wide open. Who lives in Hale Eva. Lights go up. Yep, Wayne. People around the world are talking about you. In English, Japanese, and Pidgin. You're famous, Wayne. You want to write your own book? Or play. Nah. <laughs> if I wrote my own book, nobody would read it. If I wrote my own play, nobody would come see it. You know why? My life is boring. You hear me? He picks up the phone. I just want to live in peace and be left alone. Calm down, Wayne. Look, who is doing this to me? And why are they doing it? That's what I like to find out. And when I do, who? <laughs> Chill, Wayne. Why do you think me and Chase have been making all these calls? I know, I know. You guys have been great throughout this whole mess. It's just, I've been under a little stress lately. Tracy puts her hand on his shoulder. It's okay, Wayne. We understand. Shall we get on with it, Trace? Okay. Here's where this whole st thing takes a decidedly different twist. It seems this Nisei woman from Honolulu is hooked up to a whole different grapevine. One that is composed of older retired Nisei ladies. Who watch old videotapes of Ocean every chance they get. Hey, my mom loves Ocean. Your mom is part of the grapevine too, Wayne. What? My mom? A gossip? No way. Believe it, Wayne. Through our extensive research, we found that she is an active member of a highly organized network called the JAGL. The Jagel? The Japanese, Japanese American, American Daddy, Daddy Ladies. Ladies. And they have chapters all over the world. The local chapter is quite extensive. This Nisei woman from Haleiwa is a link to this entire other network we just showed you, as well as a Jagels. Jagels. Show him, Dan. Lights go down a slider scene of Ayachan on phone holding Chibi. Submitted for your approval. Meet. Lieutenant Colonel Ayako Tombori, also known as Ayacha. She one key informant. She's one key informant and why? And one high ranking officer of the Jagu. Her MO is she never leaves home without Chibi. A slide of Chibi is seen. Her faithful dog, who may look cute and cuddly, but don't be fooled. This dog is highly trained and will turn into Kujo on demand. And our sources tell us Chibi also has her own network of doggy friends. This is Shiro. Shiro of a real dog, Shiro. And this is Yuki. Slide of real dog, Yuki. But that's another story. Ayachan passes the word through her gate fight. 
which we've connected to. That's how we heard about, which we were connected to. That's how we heard about you. Your mom doesn't have direct access to Aya child, but she is good friends with Mikiko. Slide of Mikiko on phone. Who's good friends with Haruko? Slide of Haruko on phone. Who's good friends with Chico? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Who's Chico? He's a Puerto Rican member of the Great Five. He's such a nice man. <laughs> oh. And Chico is a friend of a friend of a friend of Ayako or Ayachan. So it starts with Ayachan, does it? Who is this Ayachan? And what the hell does she want with me? No, no way. way. Oh, it goes even further. Aya. Slide changes to reveal Setchan on the phone. This is Colonel Setsuko Maguro, alias Batuna, also known as Setchan, one of the highest ranking officers in the Jago. Setchan didn't start, start out near the top, but she's well connected in this community and is a rising star within the organization. She's tough, tenacious, and very ambitious. Rumor has it that she is once up for promotion to general, but was they stopped by one pushy woman from Kalihi, whose brilliant but dirty campaign left Setchan second in command, a position she has come to green and bear. Okay, we have Lieutenant Colonel Ayako Donburi, Colonel Setsuko Maguro, who's the general. Slide changes to reveal Emiko, dressed as General Patton with a silver mixing bowl on her head. An American flag is in the background. She is on the phone. The opening music from Patton is heard. Brigadier General Emiko Nato, the highest ranking officer of the Jagal, a highly dangerous woman who lives right, right across, across the street, street from, from you. you. Wait, we have met the enemy and she is Nato. Nato. Wayne rushes out the door and looks out at Emiko's place. Lights go up on her as she is perched there watching him with her binoculars. She realizes she has been busted and quickly pretends she wasn't doing anything. I'll show you, Nato. You hear me? This means war. Scene eight. That same night, Emiko is on the phone with Sechan. Tak is sitting, reading the newspaper. Sechan, the most embarrassing news. The Kamaboku boy saw me spying on him just now, Setchan. And he didn't look too happy about it. Gossip, gossip, gossip. How many times have I told you? One day you're going to get caught. And then you're really going to be sorry. Didn't I say that? Didn't I? But you ever listen to anything I say? Do you? What is I? Meanwhile, over at Wayne's, Wayne, Tracy, and Dan are involved in a battle plan. You have mastered the way of strategy. You can suddenly make your body like on rock. And 10,000 things no can touch you. This is the body of a rock. I would not be moved. Okay, Wayne. Yeah, Wayne. Something like Mr. Miyagi or something. Mr. Miyagi? Mr. Miyagi? Who's Mr. Miyagi? It is from Miyamoto Musashi and his Book of Five Rings. To achieve a life of inner peace and tranquility, I must first defeat the enemy. Wayne begins maneuvering a fake samurai sword as he speaks. When the enemy makes a quick attack, you must attack strongly and calmly, aim for his weak point as he draws near, and strongly defeat him. Or if the enemy attacks calmly, you must observe his movement. And with your body rather floating, join in with his movement as he draws near. Move quickly and cut him strongly. This is the Taitai no Sen principle. Are you okay, Wayne? The enemy has attacked, and it is now time to attack back. We'll do what we can, Wayne, but snap out of it. You're starting to weird me out, man. Are you sure you want to do this, Wayne? This is dangerous stuff we're dealing with. The Jago is a powerful force in this community. They shut down businesses, they ruin reputations, they cause nervous breakdowns. Like, remember poor old Mrs. Musubi? But Jago started a rumor that she was low, low. And she went low, low, worrying that people thought she was low, low. They're like a pack of hungry animals salivating for juicy tidbits of gossip. Don't you see, Wayne? They'd like nothing better than to make you their latest casualty. We've seen how they operate. You can't win, Wayne. 
I have lost face. My family has lost face. I have studied the way of the warrior. I will not be defeated. I am Samurai! Exit stage left. Uh, yeah, Wayne, it's been a long night and we're all just a teensy bit tired. So I think this is a good time to say good night. And Tracy exit, stage left. Wayne remains with his sword. Japanese shakuhachi music is heard in the background. Lights up on Emiko, who is watching Wayne. Those who mess with Wayne's world pay extra for sashimi. Musashi Kamaboko has spoken. Scene nine. As Wayne goes through elaborate martial arts-like movements in his place, Dan and Tracy are talking outside of Wayne's apartment. I'm a little worried about Wayne, Dan. I know what you mean, Trace. I've known a brother for a long time, man. I've never seen him like this before. Not many people would spend two weeks on the phone trying to track down the bizarre and crazy twist of the coconut wireless. Couldn't have done it without you, Chase. Yeah, we should start our own detective firm. Yeah, Dan Tracy, private eyes. Covering Wailua, North Shore, Kailua. Kamuki, Salt Lake, Mililani. Maui, Kauai. And, and the big, big island. island. Hawaii, the mainland, Japan. Japan. Kalihi. Dan and Tracy in sync with each other embrace for what seems like a long time. Yeah, mom. I just hear one thing I want to tell you, but you have to promise not to say anything to anybody, okay? Okay. You know Mrs. Nato? Yeah, yeah. Her. Well, her husband, Peck, is having an affair with a hostess bar waitress. Yes! Mom, <laughs> why would I lie to you? I saw them together in Keomoku going into the Haba Haba Hatabe massage parlor. Yeah! Yeah! Okay, okay. Don't believe me. Oh, and remember, Mom, Mrs. Nato is not to hear a word of this. Okay? Talk to you later, Mom. <laughs> he hangs up the phone. Meanwhile, outside of Wayne's, Together is heard again and then fades. As the music fades, Dan drifts back into his original embrace with Tracy and wakes up. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Trace. Um, I didn't mean to. No, no, Dan, it's, it's my fault. We, we just got a little carried away, that's all. Yeah, I, I guess I guess we did. Chase, did you ever like, you know, have a thing for Wayne? What do you mean, a thing? You know what I mean. I've known Wayne for too long, Dan. I mean, we're more than just friends. We're like brother and sister. Anything more than that wouldn't be legal. You mean, you never thought of him in any other way? Never. Well, that's not what I heard. What do you mean? Well, I was making all those calls last week. Someone told me that you and Wayne were secret lovers, and it was you who caused this breakup with Danny. Who told you that? A uh, member of the Jago? That's all I can say, Trace. Not to promise me that you didn't hear this from me. But Jago is watching me. He's watching me, Trace. They know we're on their trail. If anybody asks, tell them my name is Sotro. Over at Emiko's, Emiko is busy in the kitchen. Tak is sitting at the table reading. The phone rings. Emiko answers. Hello? Emi-chan, Emi-chan. Are you sitting down? You're not going to believe this, Emi-chan. What else did you hear? I can't, Trace. I made a solemn pledge not to say anything. Dan! Se-chan! Tell me, Se-chan, tell me what's going on. Emi-chan, I'm your best friend, and I'm only telling you this because I'm your best friend. Tell me, Se-chan. I don't know, Emi-chan. I just don't know. Okay, my source told me that Wayne's mom was counting on Wayne to marry Annie because he's 20 years old and he's not married yet. You enter the picture, no more Annie, no more marriage. Wayne's mom throws a fit and your name is mud in this community for breaking it all up. Are you done? You pow? Oh, I could go on. Tell me, Se-chan. All right, all right. No, no. I just can't, Emmy chan I just don't know how to tell you this. 
Tell me, said Chan, that's a direct order. I can't, Emmy Chan. Our friendship means too much. Ne? My lips are sealed and throw away the key. Se-chan! Here goes. Aya Chan just told me Tak is having an affair with a female mud wrestler who serves drinks at a bar in Kiamoku. Allow me to share what I heard on my end of the grapevine. The real sordid and shocking reason Wayne and Annie broke up was not because of me and Wayne. No, 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 no. That would be too easy. The real story is Annie was jealous of an intimate relationship Wayne was having with a certain best pal. Hey, wait a sec. I thought I was his best pal. You are, my friend. No, no way. way. Contoyo. I don't believe this. No can be true. You are his best pal, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I thought it was. I mean, I'm not like that. Not according to what I heard. Oh boy, you two are the hottest item on the grapevine. Dan and Wayne, Wayne and Dan, holding hands and secret lovers. No, no it's not, it's not true. true. It's, it's not, not true. true. Aya Chan said someone saw Tak ta holding hands with her in Kiamoku. Holding Holy hands? Honto se chan? Honto yo? Don't you see what the Jago has done to us, Dan? This thing goes way beyond Wayne. While they were gossiping about Wayne, they were gossiping about us too. You mean, while we were talking to them on the phone? We were adding fuel to the fire. Oh, nobody's safe. Nobody's immune. This disease is spreading like crazy. Let's, gotta hear, let's get out of here while we still have a face to save. I'm right behind you. I'll talk to you later, said John. Oh, Emmy chan I'm sorry to have to tell you, have to be the one to tell you, but I figure it would be better if you heard it from me first. Thank you. Thank you, said John. I'll call you later. Bye. Goodbye, Emmy chan Emiko slams down the phone. As she silently paces around her kitchen, eyeing Tak, Set-chan is on the phone with Aya-chan. Aya-chan! Aya-chan! Hey! Did you tell Emi-chan? Someone had to do it. I'm number two in the organization. I guess it had to be me. Poor Set-chan. Kawaii-so ne, Set-chan. Aya-chan, I've been thinking. Do you think that Jago should have a commanding officer whose husband cheats on her? Ara, what are you suggesting, Setchan? All I'm saying is, this puts Emmy Chan's character into doubt, ne, Aya Chan? If her husband is cheating, what does that say about her? She must be doing something wrong, if you know what I mean. Who knows? She could be fooling around herself. Matakune! Isn't this mud on your sleeve? Yeah, uh, I was on the yard a little earlier. You liar! No talk to me about gardening. I know exactly where you've been and what you've been doing. Poker with the boys on Friday night. Ah! Oh, what the hell are you talking about, Ma? Can't you see I'm right in the middle of let's go fishing with Harry Kojima? Don't play innocent with me. How could you do this to me, Tak? How could you make a fool of me like this? Everybody going to be talking behind my back, laughing at me. <laughs> How could you do this to me, Tak? Emiko begins to shake Tak. In the process, she rips his mud-stained shirt sleeve. Eh, hey, it's my favorite shirt. What the hell is the matter with you? Get out. Huh? That's right. I said get out. Get out, I said. All right, all right already. I'm uh, going. Uh, come back later. He leaves. And don't come back. Tak stands outside his door, puzzled. Emiko is fuming. Sechan and Ayachan continue to talk. And Wayne, watching through binoculars, is doing a victory dance. Scene 10. Tak is outside of his place, pounding on the door, trying to get back in. Emiko is on the phone. Ma, you let me in already. Pretty soon the whole neighborhood going to be saying, eh, 
What's Tak Nato doing outside his own house? Ma! You hear me, Ma? Tak pounds some more, but receives no answer. He walks over toward Wayne's pad, where he hears Wayne's voice through an open window. He hides by the window and listens. Um, Mom, are you sitting down? Did you hear the latest? Mr. Nato has left Mrs. Nato for the Korean bar hostess. Yes, for good. I saw him leave her right in front of my apartment. Yes, yes. But word is, he's really just using this Korean bar hostess. I hear he's also seeing this stripper. I do mean seeing, if you know what I mean. Pack, mouth wide open, begins to slowly creep back to his place. But he is cut off by Tracy, who's dressed as a taiko drummer, wearing a hapi coat and hachimaki. She's posed with two sticks like she's about to strike a taiko drum and holds up her sticks. Grace, partner, what move in your mochi, man? What are you doing here, huh? Spying, perhaps? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I was locked out. Uh, I thought maybe I could borrow the Kamaboko boy's phone to call away. That's all. A likely story. Pack freezes as Tracy moves in to strike him. Dan enters wearing a hapi coat and hachimaki. He's brandishing a large push broom. Stop. Hammer time. You can't touch this is heard briefly and Dan starts doing the hammer time dance. <laughs> and who are you? I am Zatuichi Jason Scott Lee, Master Bloomsman. And who are you supposed to be? I am angry, sansei, woman, expressing my cultural pride, identity, pain, and rage to the way of the taiko. At this moment, a large taiko drum appears and makes a grand entrance to much lighting and uh, music fanfare. With the drum in front of Tracy, she speaks. I am Japanese, poetry in motion. Tracy strikes her pose, yells out in taiko drummer style, and begins a brief but intense taiko performance. Dan joins her on the opposite end of the drum. They jump, switch positions back and forth. They finish, and the drum is removed from the stage. So tonight, I join my good friends, Wayne, Musashi, and Zatoichi, Jason, Scott Lee, in a fight for our reputations, a fight for our very lives, to clear our names in the community and to rid it of this evil disease called gossip. You ask me who I am, that is who I am. She bows. Oh. Dan slams on Wayne's door, yelling out Wayne as he knocks. Wayne opens the door. We caught him standing by a window, Wayne. He's listening to everything you were saying. Get him in here, quick. Dan pushes Tack in with his push broom. Hey, don't touch me with that, you son of a... Hey, you heard me, didn't you? I didn't hear nothing. Not a word. All I wanted was to use your phone. You lie. Yeah, you lie. Wait a second. Dan, what's up with you? I am Sato Ichi, Jason Scott Lee, Master Broomsman. Wait a minute. Sato Ichi was blind, Dan. I too have been blinded by malicious gossip. I cannot show my eyes in the community for fear that somebody going to recognize me. But now is not the time to live in fear. Now is the time for cleanup, take back our streets, and fight back. Fight back. Jason Scott Lee is a man of peace, Dan. Okay, okay. Then I'm Thomas Magnum from Magnum PI. Let me get this straight. Are you Zatoichi Jason Scott Lee? Are you Thomas Magnum? Are you Dan or are you Stan? Just who are you? I am Satoichi Jason Scott Lee. I am Thomas Magnum. I am not Stan. I am Dan. Dan I am. Young people today, uh, the crazy bunch of mixed up crazy lolos. Why don't you three get a job and work? Huh? In my day, we never had time for dumb costumes. Look at these fancy tennis shoes you get. In my day, we never even have shoes. We walked 10 miles in our bare feet. And where we went? To work. That's right. That's why we went with no shoes. Shut up already. Young people, no respect. No respect for what we've been through. No respect for what we go through. I said, shut up. You shut up. Uh, I'm missing Wheel of Fortune because of you. What are we going to do with him, Wayne? Tie him up. He's not a hostage. Oh, no, you don't. Peck pulls out his pair of chopsticks from before and points them toward Wayne.
Keep your eye out, you young, you young good for nothing servant. <laughs> oh, look, guys. Mr. Nato is playing chopsticks. Wayne quickly snatches the chopsticks away from Tak. Hey! Tie him up. Dan ties him to a chair. You're not going to get away with this. You're not. I tell you, I know all your fathers. And better believe they're going to hear about this. <laughs> hey, what's so funny? You think this funny? I sure don't think so. Is this how you treat one old man? Is it? Huh? <laughs> Emiko over at her place is on the phone. I swear to you, it's true, Emi-chan. Ayo-chan told me every one of our membership went to speak to the Kamaboko boys' friends. And they reported that they were asking a lot of nosy questions about the organization. The Kamaboko boys' friends, huh? Go on, Sechan. Well, it seems Atsuko-san started the rumor about Tak and the woman mud wrestler. Atsuko? That's the Kamaboko boy's mother. Who got the rumor from the Kamaboko boy himself. Ara. Your worst enemy lives across the street from you. The boy must be stopped. That means the rumor about Tak and the mud wrestler wasn't true, Emi-chan. Wait a second, Sik-chan. Emiko rushes over to Tak's shirt sleeve scrap, looks at it, and sniffs it. Oh, Kusai. Emiko rushes over back to the phone. You're right, Sitchan. Tak was telling the truth. He was gardening. She looks out the front door. Daddy! Daddy! Are you out there? Daddy! Oh, hold on, Sitchan. I have another call. Over at Wayne's, Tack remains tied to the chair. He's holding a phone and is surrounded by Wayne, Dan, and Tracy, who have their weapons aimed at his head. Uh, Mom, uh, it's me. Uh, I get one problem over here. Daddy? Daddy, where is there? I'm so sorry, Daddy. I was all wrong about you. Come home right now, okay? Ah, uh, uh, a little tied up right now. Wayne snatches the phone from Tack. I'm afraid your husband won't be home for dinner tonight, Mrs. Nato. Hello? Who this? Wayne Kamaboko, Mrs. Nato. Kamaboko? What do you want from me, Kamaboko? What are you doing with my husband? Why don't you pull out your trusty binoculars and look for yourself? And Mickey, Emiko pulls out her binoculars and sees Tack tied to the chair. Hara? Daddy? What are they doing to you, Daddy? Kamaboko, release him right now or I'll call HPD. Oh, I wouldn't do that, Mrs. Nato. I'll put the word out that me, Dan, and your husband had a little threesome and that your husband asked to be tied up. Kamaboko, if I don't have my tack back in 10 minutes, I'm coming for him myself. Musashi Kamaboko and his posse will be waiting. Wayne slams down the phone. Wayne, Dan, and Tracy laugh maliciously and strike fight poses. Scene 11. As the battle music from the Seven Samurai plays in the background, Wayne, Dan, and Tracy are posed outside of Wayne's place, ready to do battle in the classic samurai movie style. Tak remains tied to the chair. Wayne, dressed in full samurai warrior armor and helmet, is psyching himself up for battle. He's hopping around with a wooden horse on a stick between his legs. Dan, guarding the door, is holding a war banner with three triangle painted on it. Hey, Wayne, what's up with the horse? Real samurai ride horses into battle. And this is my stallion, Woody. Say hello, Woody. He's very sensitive, so don't make fun of him. Wayne continues to ride his horse. Oh, it's a beautiful horse, Wayne. Just beautiful. Now, Chase, we don't get through this alive. I just want to say it's been real nice knowing you. Same here. Well, if we do survive, uh, you think maybe, I mean, if you're not busy, maybe we could check out the Jawaiian jam at the shell? I like that. Oh, excellent. Yagamashi! Keep it down. I'm trying to meditate. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Wayne. 
At this moment, the theme music from Hogan's Heroes is heard as Emiko, Setchan, and Ayachan, and Chibichan the dog, all dressed in full American military uniforms, medallions, and silver mixing bowls as helmets, come marching out to the music. Emiko is barking out orders. Aya is holding Chibi. Left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left. The music fades. Company, hold! Jago roll call, sound off now! Echuko! Ayako! Chibi! Addy! Emiko begins pacing the stage, turning her attention away from her troops and over to Wayne's. Ladies, this is it. The war we've been waiting for. The war to end all wars. Aya-chan, I think being general has really got into Emi-chan's head. Ne? So, ne, Setchan. Who died and made her queen anyway? Yakamashi! Setchan and Ayachan all of a sudden become the royal loyal troops again, smiling and deferring to the boss. Ah, when Emiko isn't looking, when Emiko isn't looking, they look at each other in disgust and stand, whispering to each other. Emiko prepares for battle. Maboko, you hear me, Kamaboko? Release my husband, release him now. Not a chance, Nato. Then you leave me no choice. They assume positions. Emiko picks up a large rice scooper. Setchan and Ayachan pick up large uh, sticks of daikon. Battle music is heard. One, three, each, ni. Banzai! 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 Ah! Ah! Emiko, Setchan, Ayachan, and Chibi all charge down to Wayne's place. Emiko and Wayne confront each other and begin to spar. The others stand behind in fighting positions. What do you want from me, Kamaboko? Huh? Huh? Dying your position from the Jago. Dismantle the entire organization and stop the militia gossip you've been spreading. Impossible. You think I'm going to give up my entire life because of one little bugger like you, huh? Give it up, I said. You can take up other things, like crocheting. I have power. I have status. Without me, this organization would crumble. No, I refuse your demand. The two continue to spar, and it appears that Wayne has won as he knocks away Emiko's rice scooper. Uh, Setchan, Ayachan, attack, attack! You heard the man, Emi Chan? Resign! 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 Huh? Setchan, Ayachan, Chibi Chan, what are you doing? You're with me. We're a team. You mean we were a team, but now you are no longer on it. Word is out, Emi Chan. Tack may be off the hook, but your scandalous affair with a 14-year-old boy was spread like cancer throughout our entire organization. What? This, my friend, is a coup de tack. A coup de tap? I am no longer vice president. I am taking a stand for once in my life. I'm taking Aya, Chibi, and the entire membership with me. As for now, I am in command and you are overthrown, powerless. Over my dead body. The queen is dead. Long live the queen. Ding dong, the witch is dead, the witch is dead, the witch is dead. Ding dong, the witch is dead. How dare you, Setchan? You scheming two-faced, good-for-nothing, corresponding secretary. I made you. I taught you everything I know, and this is how you repay me? Oh, oh the merry ho, sing it high, sing it low. Ding dong, the wicked witch is dead! Emiko attacks Achan and Ayachan with her rice scooper. It appears she is beating them. Then, Ayachan lets out a scream. Chibi-chan, sick her! Sick her, Chibi-chan! She throws down the stuffed dog who sits there doing nothing. Aya-chan, I do believe it's time to let you in on a little secret about your little chibi. Well, 
Hello, TV is dead. Ayachan, dead. As in no longer living, be dead for 10 years. Ayachan starts doing CPR on TV. No, this isn't true. TV is alive. TV is alive. Huh, TV? Hi, I'm alive. You see, TV answered me. TV answered me. Read my lips, Ayachan. TV is dead. Deceased. Make kaput doggy heaven. No, Sachan! Sachan, tell her it isn't true! Tell her it isn't true! Now look what you've done! War is hell, isn't it? The three start fighting again. Ayachan grabs Chibi and runs off stage. Emiko knocks out Sachan with her rice scooper. Sachan stumbles and retreats. This isn't over, Emi-chan. Kamaboko, you haven't seen the last of me. Sechan and Ayachan leave the scene. Dan follows them. Now, where were we? Get a life, why don't you? This is my life. Not you, not Sechan, not Ayachan. No one can stop me. I am Emiko. I am Emiko Nato Brigadier General. All of a sudden, Wayne knocks the rice scooper out of Emiko's hand. Weaponless, Emiko strikes the crane pose from a Karate Kid, kicks Wayne's sword out of his hand, yeah. performs some bogus martial arts moves, and knocks Wayne to the ground. Tracy charges after Wayne to help. Wayne! She looks up, and Emiko is poised and ready. So, you want some of Emi-chan too, huh? Come on, baby. Come on to Mama-san. As Wayne recovers from his head blow, Emiko strikes Tracy down and heads to Wayne's place. Seeing Tracy get hit, Wayne comes to her rescue. Tracy! Daddy! You in there, Daddy? Juma! I'll be right there, Daddy. Uh, take your time. Uh, oh, for Christ's sakes, there's a T. There's an H. What the hell do you need to buy a vowel for? How could you do it? To me, Trace. Huh? How could you bail on me like that? On prom night of all nights. Wayne drops Tracy's head on the floor. Hey, that's my head you just dropped. Just like you dropped me 11 years ago. What? You used to you use me to get Brad jealous. All the talk, all the rumors about us, the doodlings on the peachy. You played that to a tilt, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about, Wayne. We were just friends. I thought you understood. I told everyone I knew I was going to prom with you. But when we didn't show up together, I was a laughing stock of the entire school. <sighs> oh my God, Wayne. I swear to you, I never knew. Never knew what? I mean, a friend of a friend told a friend of a friend who told me that you liked someone else and you really wanted to go to the prom with her. What? Wayne, word was all over the school that you and Shelby Shumai were, Shelly Shumai were seen making out under the football bleachers and that you were just going to the prom with me because we've been friends forever and you didn't want to hurt my feelings. What? It wasn't the bleachers. It was the F. I mean, what I'm saying is I didn't even know Shelly Shumai. That's not what I heard, Wayne. I thought by bailing... I thought by bailing on you the day before, you'd have time to call Shelly. Then I could go with Brad, you could go with Shelly, and everyone would be happy. Why would I go prom with Shelly when I was going prom with you? You know, I wondered why you didn't show up at the prom. I heard you got sick at the last minute and... Yeah, you mean I've suffered in silence for 11 years all because of what you heard through the grapevine? Sorry, Wayne. I, I thought you knew. Oh, yeah, Trace. Sure, I knew. I only had the same recurring nightmare every week for the last 11 years. There we are, walking into prom, hand in hand, everyone looking at us, and us looking damn good. And then, poof, a cloud of smoke, and you're gone. And then I look down, and my pants are five inches too short. And then my mom shows up in front of everyone and says, Wayne Chan, why so ne? Let me drive you home and make you some hot cocoa, okay, Wayne Chan? Ah! And then I wake up. Ah! Emiko is now in Wayne's place to rescue Tak. How could they 
Do this to you. Daijoubu. Hey, all right. Did you see I'm watching Wheel of Fortune? Again? What do you see in her anyway, huh, Daddy? What does Vanna White have that I don't have? Oh, I can't believe it. She's buying more vowels. Ah. Daddy, Daddy, look at me. I've stood by you for 35 years, and this is the appreciation I get. Every morning I get up especially for you and fix the same breakfast we've eaten every day for the last 35 years. Well, Pac, let me tell you. I hate raw eggs, Gohan, and show you. Thanks to you, I have high cholesterol and high blood pressure. Ah, uh, your blood pressure has also been high. Sheesh. Daddy, please. You think I enjoyed eating the same breakfast for 35 years? I could have said, geez, ma, could we mix it up a little? Maybe add some Portuguese sausage or something. Ah, but breakfast, as I remember, will never be the same as when I was on boy. No, sir. In our day, we worked for our breakfast. That's right. I don't want to hear it. I'm tired of hearing how good things were in our day. They were in our day. Hey, hey, turn the TV back on. After the prom, I made a vow that no one was going to touch me. No one was going to see Wayne as, as high I was before the prom. No one. No one was ever going to laugh in my face again because I gave them nothing to laugh at. Nothing to talk about. No juicy gossip on way. No, sir. Uh-uh. If you don't give people anything, then they'll just make up, make up their own stories. But they'll still be gossiping about you. It's just something people do. You can't stop it. You can't control it. But is this any way to live, Wayne? Hiding behind this mask? Acting so cool and closed up all because you're worried about people talking about you? Laughing at you? Is that what you call living? My door closed 11 years ago. I'm sorry about what happened 11 years ago. What more can I say? I'm sorry. Apology will not give me back my honor. You don't need to be alone like this. You have me. You have Dan. Talk to us. Life is too short. Live, Wayne. Live. I can't stand it anymore. I've worked a whole lifetime trying to please you. And all you do is complain, monku, monku, monku. We never do anything together. You never take me out to dinner. You never take me out, period. And you're not the most fun guy to live with either. When I heard they took you hostage, I knew I had to go get, go get you back. Ma, don't you have to make a phone call or something? I was having more fun being tied up. Why? Don't you pay attention to me, Daddy. Maybe I wouldn't spend so much time on the phone if only you'd look at me once in a while like you look at Fanna White. Maybe I wouldn't watch Fanna if you weren't on the phone so much. You ever think about that? Yuck, yuck, yuck. What's happened to me, Tack? I started a war. I threatened to destroy a young man's life. I've lost my two best friends and... I've almost gotten beaten into a pulp by one angry Japanese woman disguised as a taiko drama. This jago thing has taken over your life. My life. I was tied to this chair because of you. I can't control it. I know can stop. I know can. You can. I can. I'll help you. You will, Daddy? Ma. I mean, Emi-chan, did you say you got pork tofu waiting for me at home? No one makes pork tofu better than you. Oh, is that a new mixing bowl on your head? It's so shiny and becoming of you. Pack, you haven't called me Emi-chan in over 30 years. We go eat, Emi-chan. Yeah, Daddy, we go. The two turn and leave Wayne and head back to their place. Say, Ma, you wouldn't happen to know uh, how to turn letter letters, would you? The trace. You mean to say you never liked me? Not even a little bit. Wayne, I seen you go shishi in your pants. I was there when you threw up in my car after Kalani's grad party. 
I just never seen you in a romantic kind of way. Yeah, I can understand that throw up pot knocked me out of any romantic contention. But hey, the shishi thing was in kindergarten, Trace. I cannot help if I drank too much apple juice during snack time. Come on, give me a break. All of a sudden, Dan enters waving the latest edition of the Hoi Shimpo. Wayne, you are not going to believe this, man. Wow. Look. Dan hands Wayne the paper, and Wayne reads the headline. Local fish boy arrested for male prostitution. Ikeo Moku Exotic Dance Club. Wayne drops the paper in disbelief. I told you we shouldn't mess with the Jago. They planted the story, man. They're out of control. Tracy picks up the paper and reads. Wayne Kamaboko, well-known fish boy of Kamaboko Fish Market, was arrested in Keiomoku last night for soliciting sexual favors from Japanese businessmen at an underground exotic dance club? Dan pulls out his own copy of the paper from his back pocket and reads. Unidentified sources in the community tipped off police to the dark and... See me other life of Wayne Kamaboko. He was my boy toy said a man only identified as Yoshi. A Japanese executive who also emphasized that Yoshi was not his real name. Stop it, guys. I don't want to hear anymore. But I call him my boy son, said Yoshi, smiling. I will miss my boy son, he continued. Boy son, come back to me, boy son. I need you. I need you now. Ah! Lights up on Setchan and Ayachan, who... Both have the paper in front of their faces. They lower the paper, look at each other, and start laughing maliciously. <laughs> <laughs> Scene 12. Lights up uh, upstage to a single chair occupied by Emiko. It is a support group setting. Today, we'd like to start the meeting by introducing our newest member to Gossips Anonymous. Emiko, welcome to the GA Way. <laughs> My name is Emiko, and I'm a gossip. Hi, Hi Emiko. Lights fade on Emiko and come up on Dan and Wayne, who enter carrying boxes of stuff from Dan's pickup truck. Dan is wearing a cowboy hat and a Mickey Mouse shirt. They are moving into Wayne's new bachelor pad again. I don't know about this, bro. What are you talking about, Danimo? This is great. Clean air, no traffic, and most of all, Nobody knows me. I'm free. How about it, Danimal? Load up your truck and move to Molokai. Anyways, duty calls back on Oahu. Chase, wants to use my truck to move her into her new dad. So, uh, things are going good between you two, eh? Eh, she says I bring out the inner child in her. Whatever that means. Excellent. The two go into their high-five routine, followed by an awkward moment of silence. I guess uh, this is it, bro. Uh, nah, man. We can still hang out, play some ball. Danimal, I live on Molokai, remember? You can't do this to me, man. I mean, you're putting Dan Hall out of business. I'll have nothing to do. Wait a sec. I thought you are moving Tracy. Oh, yeah. That's right. Hasta la vista, baby. Dan I'm out of here. I am out of here. Danimal. I'm going to miss you, bro. Dan freezes and walks back to Wayne. I'll miss you too, Wayne. Take care of yourself, bro. The two hug. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Check it out. I've got something for you. Dan pulls out a brown paper bag and gives it to Wayne. Oh, and here. You're going to need this, partner. He takes the cowboy hat off of his head and gives it to Wayne, who puts it on. Thanks, bro. Gotta go, bro. You owe me big time for this one. Wayne opens the bag to find a brand new Nerf ball. All right. A new ball. A new ball. <laughs> he dances around a bit. I've got a new ball and a new pad. And at last, peace and quiet. Yes. He dances around again. The doorbell rings. Wayne opens the door. It's a Nisei couple played by the same actors who are playing Tak and Emiko. How's it, bro? I'm your next door neighbor, neighbor, Usako Somaki. And this here is my husband, George. Just thought we'd do the neighborly thing and bring you some homemade hot and spicy chili yaki. Hope you 
like it. She walks past Wayne and starts checking out his new pad. Don't believe it caught your name. Kamaboko. Wayne Kamaboko. You're not the son of Shig Kamaboko. Brother of Kaz Kamaboko from Kagoshima Ken? Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. <laughs> I know your daddy from way back. It sure is a small world, ain't it? Uh, this isn't happening, right? I mean, tell me this isn't happening. That's right. <laughs> it's just a dream, okay? Wayne, you can wake up now. Everything will be okay. George pulls out a copy of Hawaii Herald from his back pocket. Wait a sec. Come a boco. Come a boco. Ain't you that male hooker from Kuhio Street? Ah! We then hear Wayne scream in the dark. Animal! Come back, animal! Blackout. Where'd you get these here shades? Kmart? Lights fade to black. Coconut Wireless by the Ray Charles Singers is heard. End of play. Mm -hmm.